Assalamualaikum and good morning. Today I'm going to uh, present uh, two topic regarding the uh, the special senses. The special senses here include two topics. Uh, the the eye, the structure of the eye, and also the ear. So I'm going to uh, discuss on the eyeball first. The eye. Okay, so uh, before we go further on discussing the eyeball or the eye, we have to know the covering part of the eye. Okay, the facial sheath of the eyeball. Okay, so the facial sheath of the eyeball is known as a tenon capsule. Okay, so you can see here the white color line here is actually it represents the tenon capsule. Okay, uh, the tendon capsule it extends from the optic nerve. So you can see here this is the optic nerve. Okay, to the toward the cornea spheral junction. Okay, okay, you can see here this is the cornea spheral junction, junction between the cornea. This is the uh, this is the uh, cornea and also the sclera right here. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what is the function of the tendon capsule? The tendon capsule. It separate the eyeball from the orbital fat. So you can see here at the back here, we have the orbital fat. So it separate the eyeball from the orbital fat. Okay. So so you can see here, it provide some of the boundary, not not to say to say boundary, but it separate the okay, uh, eyeball from the orbital fat. Okay. Uh, and then the other functions of the ten capsule is to provide the free movement. Okay, it allow the free movement of the eyeball. Okay, and the tendon capsule is pierced by the tendon of the extraocular muscle. So you can see here at the front here we have the tendon of the extraocular muscle. Okay, and then we also have the medial and lateral check ligament. So you can see here this is the lateral check ligament. This is the medial check ligament. So how this check ligament check ligament is being formed? So actually, the origin of the check ligament is from the expansions and from the muscular sheath. So if you see, if you follow the uh, the white line here, so you can see here, the white line here actually cover, is a covering of the muscle, the ocular muscle. So it extends, uh, expand on the lateral side. So you can see here, this is the lateral check ligament, this is the medial check ligament. And then we also have the suspensory ligament of the eye. Uh, the suspensory ligament of the eye actually is originated from the uh, fascia from the inferior rectus and also the inferior oblique muscles, but uh, it is not shown in this picture. Lah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, just to show you the other picture of the check ligament. So we have the lateral check ligament and the medial check ligament and also the uh, fascia sheet of the eyeball and the orbital fat. Okay. Now we're going to uh, discuss on the structure of the eye. Okay. So we, we are going to see what are the structure that we have whenever you cut the eyeball into a two half. Okay. So the there are three layers. The, the eye it has three layers. Okay. It has an outer fibrous layer. Uh, so the outer fibrous layer it consists of the sclera at the back here and the cornea in front here. And then in the middle we have the middle vascular layer. So this is the middle vascular layer it consists of the. Uh, uh, the vessel, okay, the vascular. From the name, you know, there is a mainly is uh, actually is uh, involved a vessel, middle vascular layer, or uvular tract. So the component of the uh, middle vascular layer. So you can see here we have the iris. At the front here we have the iris, and then we have the uh, back to the iris we have the ciliary body. At the back of the iris we have the ciliary body, and then going back we have the choroid. So this is the choroid. Okay, middle. So that is the component of the middle. And then for the inner nervous layer, inner nervous layer it consists of the retina. So you can see here, this is the retina, the yellow color structure. Okay, uh, we start to discuss on the sclera. Okay, the sclera from the Greek word means uh, it means heart. Okay, it is the opaque part, the opaque part, whitish color part. Okay, white in color and strong. So the sclera it cover the posterior fifth sixth of the eyeball. So you can see here, you can see uh, most of the part of the outer fibrous layer actually is made up of the sclera fifth sixth of the eyeball 
posterior. Okay. And then uh, we have the lamina cribosa. Okay, this is the lamina cribosa. Actually, lamina cribosa is the, the weakest point. So the, in, the entry point, so you can see here, there is a weakest point. Okay. Where we don't have a... Uh, for that, we don't have the sclera. And this is the weakest point now, where the optic nerve. So you can see the yellow color structure here actually is the optic nerve. It enter the eyeball. Okay. So the weakest point. Okay. Where the sclera is deficient. Okay. And then the cornea in front here, you can see here is the cornea. Okay. It covers the anterior one six of the eyeball. And it, for the cornea, it forms the first refractory surface. Mm -hmm. Refractory surface, which contribute to the image formation. Okay. So cornea is involved in the uh, image formation. And the cornea, it is a transparent part, okay, transparent part, and cornea also it does not have a blood supply, okay, because of the absence of the blood supply, supply it is uh, transparent, okay. And cornea is uh, sensitive to touch, okay, because it is supplied by the uh, optimic, optimic division of the trigeminal nerve, okay, optimic division, uh, optimic division of the trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve is actually is a fifth cranial nerve, okay. And in the uh, cornea here, it is nourished by the aqueous humor, okay? aqueous humor, and not only that, uh, it also nourished by the tears and also oxygen from the air because you know the cornea is exposed directly to the air, so it's uh, also nourished by the oxygen from the air and the the tears as well because the it is uh, the tears is always uh, going here, so. It is uh, also nourished by the tears. Okay, the tears will flow, lah, flow, flow toward the cornea. So that's why it also nourished by the uh, tears. Okay, you can see here this is the bigger image. So we have at the front here we have the cornea. Okay, anterior one fifth, posterior one uh, fifth six. We have the sclera at the back here. Okay, and then we have the lamina cubosa, the, uh, the weakest point of the sclera. Uh, sclera, uh, sclera. Okay, where the optic nerve enter into the eyeball. Okay. Okay, now we're going to move to the middle vascular layer, second layer. Okay, for the middle vascular layer, uh, just now I have mentioned that this uh, this middle vascular layer has two, three components. Right? So the first one is iris. So you can see here this is the iris. So iris is a colored circular disc. Uh, circular disc. Nah. So you can see here it's like a disc. Okay. And it lies anterior uh, surface. And, uh, it lies on the anterior surface of the lens. So you can see here, this is the lens. So it lies on the anterior surface of the lens. And uh, there is a central opening, central aperture, central aperture. Yeah, uh, that open there. So the central aperture here, the opening is known as a pupil. Uh, the iris is. It has a. Con uh, it is actually the iris is a. It is a contractile diaphragm. It's a contractile diaphragm. Okay, uh, because of the presence of two smooth muscles. So we have two smooth muscles. We have the sphincter pupillae. So you can see here, this is the sphincter pupillae. Okay, based on the direction of the muscle, we know it's a circular form. So we cut, then you can see like this. Lah. Okay, uh, it, it closes pupil. Okay, it is innervated by the parasympathetic nerve. So you can see here, this is the uh, sphincter pupillae. And then we have a dilator pupillae. You can see here, this is the dilator pupillae. It's in the radio. Okay. So the function of this dilator pupillae is actually to open the pupil. Okay, it is supplied by the sympathetic um, nerve. So the color of the iris it is um, depend on the number of melanopore in its trauma. Okay, so you can, uh, if you see the 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 iris of the uh, the iris, you can see that it is colored right. So the the color of the iris depend on the number of this uh, melanopore. Okay. Then we're going to proceed with the next second component of the uh, middle vascular layer, the ciliary body. So you can see here, this is the part of the ciliary, uh, ciliary body. So the ciliary, uh, ciliary body, it has two components, the ciliary muscle. So you can see here, this is ciliary muscle and the ciliary process. So this is the ciliary process. Okay. And the ciliary muscle, uh, so we have two fiber, the circular fiber, this is the circular fiber and this is the meridional fiber. And for the ciliary process, it is a fall of the internal structure, fall of the internal structure, uh, fall of the internal surface, fall of the internal surface. And the function of the ciliary process is to secrete the aqueous humor. So it uh, secret uh, uh, one liquid that is known as aqueous humor, okay, a fluid, a fluid. 
fluid. Uh, it's a uh, discrete the fluid. It's, it's known as a casino, which this uh, liquid, uh, liquid, okay, or um, um, it uh, this uh, casino it actually fill the posterior chamber. So if this is the posterior chamber, this is the anterior chamber, okay. And then uh, the next, the last uh, component of the video vascular layer is a choroid. Choroid is a pigmented vascular layer. Choroid. If you see here, okay, the red color line, line here is actually represent the choroid part. Okay. Uh, it is a pigmented vascular layer, and the choroid it attached firmly to the pigment layer of the retina. Okay, it attached firmly to the retina, and uh, but it is loosely attached to the sclera. Okay, that is the, the characteristic of the choroid. You have to remember. Okay, so you can see here, this is the iris, and so this is the uh, the we call that ciliary body. Okay, the ciliary body. So the ciliary body it has two component, which is the ciliary, uh, ciliary muscle here. So we have the uh, circular fiber of the ciliary muscle and meridional fiber of uh, uh, ciliary muscle, and then we have the uh, ciliary process. Okay, the in, uh, the folded internal surface or internal structure. Okay, and this is the component of the ciliary body. Okay. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the uh, inner vascular, uh, inner nervous, inner nervous layer. Okay, inner nervous layer, the third layer. So for the inner nervous layer, it has two layers. Okay, the outer retinal pigmented layer. So you can see here, this is the outer outer part, uh, RPE, retinal pigmented epithelium, uh, RPE. Uh, retinal uh, outer retinal pigmented epithelium. Okay, RPE, the outer, uh, outer part. And this outer part here, it fuses with the choroid. Fuses with the choroid. Okay. Uh, and then the inner layer here, it is a neural layer. Okay. You can see here, it is consists of nerve right. And then posterior, uh, the three fourth, um, it forms the receptor organ. And the anterior, it is a non receptive. Okay. Now, uh, anterior, uh, it is a non receptive. And the anterior edge forms the aura serrata. Okay. Uh, the wavy border. Okay, if you see here, this is the aura serata. Okay, uh, if you see the model, so you can see that it's actually it, it formed the wavy border. Okay, and the uh, the the anterior part. Okay, the, uh, now I mentioned the anterior edge. Uh, the, the, the the anterior part is not receptive lah. Okay. Okay, if you follow the line, uh, uh, the yellow color line, you can see here. So it extend. Uh, toward the front right, so the at the front here it is an uh, uh, non receptive. Okay. okay, you can see here that it uh, uh, that, that you can see. So this is the ciliary part of the retina. You can see the ciliary part of the retina. Okay, uh, that one is non receptive. Okay, and then at the back there we have a visual part of the retina, so it is receptive. Mm -hmm. So receptive means that involved in the image form. Okay, and then uh, for the inner nervous layer, uh, this is the, the view that you can see if you view the internal part of the eye, eyeball by using uh, one instrument that known as a fundoscopy. Okay, so this is the back of the retina, actually you can see. Huh? And the inner nervous layer is supplied by the central retina artery. So you can see here, this is this, uh, the artery is actually emerged from here, the central retina artery, and then it give up several branches here. So this uh, artery, so you can see it's applied okay, to the retina. The posterior part, okay, the posterior part here, this is the posterior part of the retina, the fundus of the retina. So we have two uh, important structure that you can see at the back there, or at the back, uh, the fundus part, the macula lithia, number one, macula lithia, and the number two is the optic disc. Okay. The macula lithia, actually the macula lithia is a, uh, uh, whenever you draw a line from here toward to, toward the front, that passing through the the middle part of the cornea, so you can see that macula lithia it is in line with the visual axis, okay, in line with the visual axis, and uh, macula lithia it has a center oval yellowish area, okay, you can see center oval yellowish area, and um, the uh, it is the side where the most distinct vision actually uh, the distinction uh, that actually uh, happen, okay, most distinctions. And we have the uh, fovea centralis, okay, the central depression in the middle, okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Please remember that macular lithia is the the most distinct vision actually is being created. Okay. The area that most uh, distinct visions that actually being created or uh, that happen. Okay. Macular lithia. Okay. The optic disc. Uh, this is the optic disc. It's a pill. Uh, this is a pale pink structure with the optic nerve the leaf the retina. Okay. Where the optic nerve leave the retina. Okay. Uh, actually, they are the side where the, you can find the optic disc. And uh, where is the location of the optic disc? Uh, it is a three millimeter to medium side of the macula. So you can see here this is the macula, right? This is nasal. This is the temporal. So T is temporal and it's nasal. Nasal is toward the middle. T is toward, uh, toward the middle. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you draw, a, 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 if you measure from here to here, uh, the optic disc is three millimeter to medium side of the macula. Okay. And then uh, uh, in the middle, we have the central depression. Okay. And the uh, optic disc, it is pierced by the central retina artery. Okay. You can see here, this is the central retina artery that you know, emerge and then give rise to uh, several branches. Whenever it pierced by the central retina artery, it giving us uh, one kind of uh, condition, which is known as a physiological cup. Okay. Physiological cup. And in the optic disc, there is a complete absence of rods and cones. So it is and because of this uh, characteristics, complete action of rods and cones, so it is a blind spot of the eye. Okay. So whenever this part is become swollen, uh, so it is known as a papilo edema. So you can see here, swollen light, okay, swelling of the optic disc. Okay, you can see here, okay, this is the optic disc, okay, this is the macula lutea. Temporal part, nasal part, inferior and superior, the direction you have to know. Uh, otherwise, you know which part is actually is the middle, which one, which part is the lateral. Okay. And then now we're going to discuss in content of the eyeball. Okay. Uh, it is called as, as a reflective media of the eye. Okay. Reflective media that involved in the image function. So first component of the reflective media is a cornea. Second one is a pressima. The third one is lens. And the last one is a vitreous humor. Okay. The cornea, uh, okay, we have discussed it now. So uh, you can back to go back to your uh, the, the the slide that I have uh, mentioned earlier. So actually, it's a similar thing. Okay, so it's just a repetition. Lah. Okay, the first component of the that form the reflective media, reflective media is cornea. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the ecosima. Okay, this part uh, I don't uh, I haven't explained. Okay, ecosima. So the ecosima is a clear fluid that fills the anterior and posterior chamber. Okay. So, uh, so you can see here. This is the anterior chamber. This is the posterior chamber. So it is a clear fluid, okay, okay see, uh, filling the this two chamber. And <clears throat> the secretion definitely is secreted by the ciliary process. Okay, if you still remember, that I have mentioned early, uh, the ciliary process, the function is to secrete the ecosima. Okay, and what is the function? The important of the ecosima is provide the nutrient to the cornea and also to the lens. So that is the importance of the ecosima. And for the drainage of the ecosystem, okay, so this is the pathway that you need to follow. Uh, it is secreted by the ciliary process and then it goes to the posterior chamber and then it will go into the pupil, the opening there, and then go into the anterior chamber and then it will enter into a, it go into a, it will drain into a canal of shem, okay, canal of shem, okay, it's located at the iridocorneal angle. So you can see here, this is the canal of shem, located okay, at the uh, yeah, iridal corneal angle. Okay, the uh, the uh, the angle between the iris, so this is the iris, and also the cornea. We have the canal here. The open here. Okay, and there is one condition that is known as the glaucoma due to the obstruction to the drainage of the aqueous humor. So you can see here, this is the slam canal. Okay, so you can see how the uh, the aqueous humor is moved so from the cellular process. It, where it is being produced by the cellular process, and then go to the posterior chamber, and then it passing through the pupil, and then go to the anterior chamber. Later, it will drain into the uh, into the stem canal. Okay, now we're going to proceed to the next one, the lens. Okay, for the lens, it is located posterior to the iris. So you can see here this is the iris, right? So this is the lens. So it's located posterior to the iris, uh, and anterior to the vitreous humor. So at the back here, we have the vitreous humor. So this is the lens. So the lens is a transparent, transparent, biconvex, uh, biconvex. So you can see here, biconvex structure, and the lens it is enclosed in elastic lens capsule. 
Okay, it is uh, enclosed by the land capsule. Okay, uh, so you can see here. Okay, this is the the capsule. Okay, capsule that covering the lens. Uh. Okay, uh, it is enclosed in the uh, elastic lens capsule. Okay, the anterior surface only. Uh, the on the anterior surface only. Anterior surface. Uh, uh, there is a presence of the cuboidal epithelium. So you can see here we have the epithelium on the anterior surface. The lens fiber, the lens fiber, the lens fiber uh, actually is the main part, the main book of the lens. lens fiber. Okay. Um, uh, the lens, it is attached to the ciliary process. Okay, you can see here it attached to the ciliary process by the this ligament, the suspensory ligament. Of the lens. Okay. Okay. We have one uh, important reflect here, the accommodation reflect. Okay. For the um, accommodation reflect, uh, accommodation of the eye, whenever you see the near object, okay, the ciliary muscles will contract. Whenever the ciliary muscle contract, uh, the suspensory ligament will become relaxed. The disc ligament will become relaxed whenever these muscles will become contract. Okay. So the lens will become thicker, okay, globular. And then whenever you see a far object, the ciliary muscle will become relaxed. Okay, the ciliary muscle will become relaxed, and the sense sensory ligament will contract. Okay, and the lens become thin. Okay, that is actually the accommodation of the eye. Okay, you can see here this is the capsule of the lens. This is the nucleus of the lens. This is the suspensory ligament of the lens, and this is the ciliary uh, body. Okay. Okay, uh, now we're going to proceed to discuss on the vitreous humor. Vitreous humor, humor is located behind the lens. It is a transparent gel. It's a gel, transparent. And uh, location, a posture for fifth of the eyeball. And then we have the hyaluronic canal. Okay, you can see here the uh, hyaluronic canal. The hyaluronic canal, you can see uh, on the other picture, lah, it's more clear. Okay, you can see here, this is the hyaluronic canal. Okay. Okay, the okay, okay. The hyaluronic canal is a narrow channel, uh, channel uh, from the optic nerve disc to the posterior of the lens. Okay, that I showed you just now. Okay, from the optic disc uh, to the posterior. So the function of the fluid, okay, the function of the vitreous humor, okay, the fluid here, uh, is support the lens, okay, support the lens and hold the two days of the retina, the retina in place. So that is the functions of the. Uh, and then uh, the functions of the fluid, okay, the function of the fluid, okay, the vitreous schema, okay, the function of the fluid, okay, vitreous schema, okay. And then now we're going to proceed to the discuss on the extraocular muscles. This is the whenever you know, the eye wall that you can see whenever you view it from the anterior, okay. So we have the muscle here. You can see here, uh, this is the muscle we have, okay, okay. And we have the superior oblique, superiorectus, inferiorectus, superiorectus, inferiorectus, and inferior oblique muscles. Okay, muscle of the orbit. Uh, we have uh, one, uh, another one muscle here, levator papillary superioris muscle. So you can see here, this is the uh, levator papillary superioris muscle. Actually, the levator papillary superioris muscle, it elevate your eyelid. Okay, this is the, uh, the function of this muscle. And then we have four rectile muscle, the superior, inferior, and medial and lateral. So, media rectus, rectus, lateral rectus, there is a rectus, rectus is a plural, rectus is a singular. And then we have two oblique muscles, superior and inferior. Okay, so you can see here, this is the inferior oblique, this is the superior oblique. Okay, so you can see here, follow the arrow, this is the superior oblique muscle, and this is the inferior oblique muscle. Okay, and this is the lateral rectus, this is the superior rectus, this is the inferior rectus. And then, uh, levator papillary superioris muscle, levator papillary superioris muscle, uh, it elevate the muscle of the superior eyelid, the eyelid that I mentioned just now. It elevate the eyelid, open the eyelid. And then the elevation here it is uh, elevated by the third plane of levator papillary superioris muscle. And the distal attachment to the ductal, to the tarsal plate, to the eyelid, to the tarsal plate. Okay, we're going to discuss on the rectile muscle first. Okay, the four rectile. Muscle arises from the fibrous cuff. Okay, the forward thigh muscle arises from the fibrous cuff. You can see here, the this medium here is the fibrous cuff, and this fibrous cuff is known as a common tendinous ring. Okay, 
lateral and medial. Lateral and medial uh, is on the same horizontal plane. Okay, horizontal plane. Right? Superior and inferior. Okay, same vertical plane. All rectal muscle here is attached. Uh, uh, all rectal muscle here is attached to the sclera. So you can see here, all rectal muscle here is attached to the sclera. The whitish part is the sclera. On the uh, and uh, it attached on the entire half of the eyeball. And then for the oblique muscle, we have the inferior oblique, we have the superior oblique muscle. Okay, this is the superior oblique muscle. Okay, the inferior oblique muscle, inferior oblique muscle, uh, the function is for adductions and also elevation, plus uh, the elevation here also done by the superiors. Okay, and then superior oblique muscle, it is uh, for adductions and also the depression. And depression also done by the inferior rectus muscle okay so uh, this table just to show you the all the muscle that we have and also the origin of each of the muscle so you can see here the spirit rectus muscle it is uh, originated in, uh, from the upper border of the optic canal in rectus lower border of the optic canal medial rectus medial border of the optic canal lateral rectus lateral border of the optic canal actually is um, all of this muscle is actually originated from the optic canal um, uh, the different just actually the, the different here just the where actually is uh, being attached to okay either is uh, on the medial side lateral side upper or lower and uh, all of this uh, four ectal muscle it is inserted just posterior to the corneal scleral junctions okay posterior to the junction between the cornea and also the sclera okay just posterior to the junction and then uh, for the superior oblique it is originated the margin of the optic, uh, the margin of the optic canal, and mm -hmm. uh, it passes through the pulley. So you can see here, it passes through the pulley, pulley. Okay, you see, it passes through the pulley, pulley here. Hook, it's like hook, like structure. This is like, uh, uh, through the pulley, and then uh, uh, being attached to the super surface uh, behind the equator. Attached to the super surface behind the equator. So you can see here, this is super surface. Uh, behind the okay. And then the inferior oblique, um, it is originated from the medial aspect of the floor of the orbit. So you can see here, uh, uh, it is being uh, oriented uh, uh, from the floor of the orbit here. Okay, and then uh, attached uh, on the lateral surface behind the equator. You can see here, it is attached uh, to the uh, lateral surface uh, behind the equator. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to proceed and to discuss on the ocular movement. Okay, so whenever you discuss on the ocular movement, okay, the pupil, uh, okay, the, or the center of the cornea of the pupil uh, is used as an anatomical uh, anterior pole. So uh, we, uh, we, we assume that the pupil become an anterior pole. Okay, so all movement of the eye are related to the direction of movement of this pole. Okay, whenever you discuss on the movement, so it is actually uh, related to the direction movement of the, the pole. The anterior pole, okay. The anatomical, uh, the anterior pole. Okay, so we have three axes. We have the vertical axis and the z-axis. So you can see here, this is the z-axis that drawn vertically from up to down. And uh, here, vertical axis is to describe on these two movements: adduction and adduction. Okay, uh, adduction actually is uh, whenever I is rotated laterally, and adduction is whenever the eye is rotated medially. And then. Uh, Horizontal x-axis. Okay, if you see here, this is the x-axis. Uh, this actually involves the movement, depression, and also the elevation. And the sagittal or y-axis. You can see here, so L y axis and sagittal. It's rotor, uh, rot rot rotatory, rotatory movement. Okay, rotatory movement. Okay, rotatory movement. So, uh, where we have two uh, intortions, uh, medial rotator and extortion. Okay. Lah. Okay, um, so adductor, adductor movement, adductor, adductor muscle, adductor, I mean, uh, the, the adduction movement. It is done by the these, these three muscles, uh, the lateral rectus, supra oblique, and also the inferior oblique. But it is mainly by the lateral rectus. Yeah. So the axis here, the uh, the axis, uh, the point here that we use to uh, like a uh, landmark here is actually is the z axis, uh, vertical axis. Okay. The 
exists actually is uh, what we call the the, uh, the pivot the pivot point pivot point okay on the way like it's like a earth right okay the earth so okay we have the uh, the pivot point where the earth actually is rotated okay so you can see here okay the the pivot point here is from up to the down vertical point uh, vertical direction okay so abductor so you can see here okay whenever the muscle is a uh, whenever this muscle is contracted the lateral rectus muscle, so you can see here how the eye is being uh, rotated laterally, move laterally lah. Okay. So this is a med uh, medial, this is a lateral. Okay. And then for the adductor, we, uh, it is uh, uh, done by the medial rectus, uh, and also the superior rectus and inferior rectus, but mainly by the medial rectus lah. And uh, to describe this, actually we are using the Z axis, the K axis, the pivot point also still here. So you can see how the eye is being moved whenever the medial rectus is uh, contracted, is uh, rotated medially moving toward the medial. Okay, and then the depressor, okay, depressor. So we have the inferior rectus and also the superior oblique, but this is mainly by the inferior rectus. So we are using the x-axis. Uh, this is the x-axis. Okay, x-axis, the pivot axis here. Okay. So previously here, right, uh, vertical axis right here is a uh, uh, horizontal axis. So the eye is moving like this. Okay. So the uh, for the depression, <clears throat> so whenever the inferior rectus is contracted, so what happened? Uh, uh, the eye is moving down. Okay. The eye is moving down. Okay. And then elevator uh, uh, done by the superior rectus and inferior oblique. Uh, so it involves the movement elevation. So you can see. So how the eye is being moved. Okay, elevations. Okay, if the eye is elevated. Lah. Okay, the pivot axis here horizontal. Okay. And then sagittal uh, intorsion and uh, intorsion by the superior oblique, and sometimes by the superior rectus lah, but mainly by superior oblique. So we are using the uh, y axis, y axis. So you can see here this y axis the pivot point. Okay, so it involves the intorsions, uh, medial rotator lah, medial rotator. So you can see here how the eye is being moved. Okay, how its eye is being moved uh, in torsion. Okay, like this. Okay, and then we have the extorsion by the done by the inferior oblique muscle. Okay, in this one, go back. Okay, this is the superior rectus. Whenever this muscle is contracted, so you can imagine how the uh, eye is being moved. Okay, so uh, for the extorsion or lateral rotator, inferior oblique and inferior rectus. Okay, uh, this is the inferior. Uh, Okay, so if you see here, this is the inferior oblique muscle, <coughs> this is the inferior rectus muscle. So, whenever these two muscles, or oh, this muscle, okay, is contracted, so you can imagine how the eye is being moved. Okay, this one, the muscle, okay, contracted, muscle being moved, extortion, okay. Okay, so <coughs> muscle of the orbit, orbit, this is the muscle of the orbit. Uh, Levator palpebrae superioris muscles, rectus muscle, inferior rectus muscle, medial rectus muscles, and also inferior orbit muscle is supplied by the third cranial nerve. Only the rectus rectus, uh, the rectus rectus is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve. Posterior orbit is supplied by the fourth cranial nerve. Okay, so so you can see here the other muscle is supplied by the third cranial. Okay, this is the five functions. Okay, five function the eye, and secondary function the tertiary function. There's the uh, Primary function is the main function of the uh, uh, the extraocular muscle. Okay, the primary function of the extraocular muscle. Okay. Okay. So this is the summary of the extraocular muscle movement. Lah. Okay, elevation, abduction, induction, depression. Okay. Okay. And then now we're going to see on the medial wall and lateral wall. Okay, the medial wall. So you can see here this is the medial wall. It's a parallel in the parallel sagittal plane. Okay. Lateral wall is 45 degrees. So if you show a draw a line here, as you can see, it's a 45 degrees to the parent sagittal plane. Okay. okay, the other muscle you can uh, I have shown you just now. Okay. And then we have the common cranial string. So you can see here this is the common cranial string that I have mentioned earlier. Okay, uh, my nerve. Okay, so you can see here we have the third cranial nerve, fourth cranial nerve, and sixth cranial nerve that are going to enter into the uh, optic uh, canal, okay.
and then uh, arteries and vein of the orbit and eyeball okay and we have the uh, the uh, the optic artery the uh, optic artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery so you can see here the optic artery it gives rise to several branches we have the lacrimal artery that supply to the lacrimal gland and then going uh, to the front here we have the orbital artery and then going here to become a supratrochlear artery and then yeah, and then in later, it will branch, uh, whenever it will going out from the orbital cavity, it branch or uh, it will form another uh, a branch, uh, a branch into a two another uh, into a two another artery, which is the anterior and medial artery, posterior and medial artery. And then for the vein, so you can see here this is the carotid sinus. You can see how the connection is happen okay, with the superior optic vein. The the venous blood will be drained from the super superior optic vein will be drained into the carotid sinus. We also have the inferior optimate vein that also drain into the cavity sinus. Okay. Okay, for the lacrimal apparatus, lacrimal. Okay. Lacrimal apparatus that produce the field. So we have the lacrimal gland and also the lacrimal duct. Okay, this is the lacrimal gland. Lacrimal gland is located in the fossa for the lacrimal gland. Okay. On the supralateral part of the orbit. Uh, the orbital part, so you can see here, this is the orbital part, the larger part, the supreme. And then we have the palpebral part, so you can see here, this is the palpebral part, in small, in inferior, inferior to the orbital part. The gland open into the superior phonics, so gland is open into the superior phonics by the uh, uh, superior phonics of the, gland open into the superior phonics of conjunctival. Let me show you the superior phonics of the conjunctival. Okay, so you can see this is the super, superior conjunctival phonic so the gland is open here okay so the uh, gland open into the square phonics of conjunctiva by a 8 to 12 duct so if you see here we don't have small a line here actually it represents the duct okay and the lacrimal apparatus is supplied by the parasympathetic supply from the lacrimal nucleus of the uh, seven cranium okay it also supplied by the sympathetic uh, nerve by uh, uh, through the internal keratin process okay and uh, okay for this is the, the direction of the uh, the direction of the tears uh, from the lacrimal duct the tears will flow from the lateral to the medial corner from the mid lateral to the medial corner from the lacus in lacrimalis uh, to the punctum lacrimalis uh, okay you can see here this is the punctum lacrimalis uh, from the lacus lacrimalis to the punctum lacrimalis and then canal liquidi lacrimalis. Okay, this is the canal liquidi. You can see here the canal. Okay, canal liquidi lacrimalis and lacrimal sex. You can see here this is the lacrimal sex. Okay, and then later we we drain into the naso naso lacrimal duct. So you can see here this is the naso lacrimal duct. Okay, and it, uh, <coughs> okay. So this uh, lacrimal duct. Uh, uh, the, this lacrimal uh, lacrimal apparatus it is supplied lacrimal uh, uh, lacrimal gland it is supplied by the uh, optimal divisions of the optimal division of the trigeminal nerve okay and motor by the pterygoplatine ganglion of the facial nerve for uh, and then uh, the nasal lacrimal duct it open into the inferior meatus uh, of the nerves it open into the inferior meatus of the nerves you can see here this is the inferior meatus uh, this is the inferior meatus okay this is the inferior meatus so it, here, okay, and then uh, nasal lacrimal duct, okay, nasal lacrimal duct open into the inferior meatus, okay. Okay, now I'm going to proceed to discuss on the eyelid, okay, the eyelid, see here, see, you can see here, this is the eyelid, okay. The eyelid is a protective skin flap, okay, protective skin flap, to protect your eye, okay. Uh, it consists of the muscles, okay. Mas the muscle here is levato papabrae superioris muscle. So you can see here, this is the levato papabrae superioris muscle. Okay. Uh, this muscle, levato papabrae superioris muscle, it will be, it will be attached to the tussle plate. Lah. And then we have the orbicularis oculi muscle. Okay, orbicularis uh, oculi muscle. So you can see here, this is the orbicularis oculi muscle. Okay. And the tussle pad, this is tussle pad. Tussle pad, uh, uh, so we have the superior part and also the inferior part. And it is formed by the dense connective tissue. Lah. And then we have the tussle gland. Okay, okay you can see here the mebomian. Okay, mebomian gland. Okay, 
uh, it open in, on the inner surface of the eyelid. So you can see it open in the inner surface of the eyelid. Uh, so uh, the function of the uh, test gland or meibomian gland here is to secret liquid. Uh, so whenever it secret liquid, uh, it keep eye moist of eyelid. Uh, from, uh, it keep the eye moist and prevent eyelid from sticking together. Uh, the ciliary gland is associated with the eyelash. Okay, ciliary gland. Okay. okay, you can see here the spacious gland. Okay, uh, and then the common lesion that involves the eyelid is a tap nephalsy, the tosis dropping of the eyelid. Okay, okay, for the conjunctiva, okay, conjunctiva, try to follow the uh, white line. Okay, that is the uh, conjunctiva. Okay. Uh, for the conjunctiva, it has two parts, uh, the palpable part and bulba part. Okay, so the palpable part is actually is uh, associated with the eyelid, and the bulba part uh, is uh, the mucosa that line the sclera. Okay, the, the, the mucosa that line the sclera is a palpable part. Uh. Okay, and the conjunctiva it reaches with the blood vessel. So, okay, try to follow the line. So whenever it reflects, so you can, you can see here whenever it reflect line of reflection here it form the conjunctival phonics. So you can see here this is the superior for conjunctival phonics, and this is the inferior conjunctival phonics. Okay, it reflects eh? conjunctival. Okay, now we're going to start to discuss on the ears. So okay, now okay, now we're going to move to the next topic of presentation regarding the ears. Okay, for the parts of the ear, okay, so for the ear, it has three parts, the external ear, middle ear, and also the internal ear. Okay, for the external ear, so it is consists of uh, this component, the auricle, okay, the external acoustic meters, okay, the canal here, the, canal, uh, the external acoustic meters, and also the tympanic membrane. So these are the components of the external ear. And then we have the middle ear. Middle ear uh, is actually consists of the uh, tympanic cavity, tympanic cavity, okay, pharyngeal tympanic tube, special tube, and auditory ossicles, and auditory ossicles, and also the muscles. So that is the component of the middle ear. Okay. And then the internal ear, we have the bony labyrinth, bony labyrinth, and also the membranous labyrinth. Okay. The bony labyrinth here, the uh, the chocolate one, and uh, the the chocolate color, uh, and then the uh, membranous labyrinth is a uh, bluish in color. Okay. Uh, okay. So we have the external ear, middle ear, and also the internal ear. Okay. Okay. Start to discuss on the auricle part of the external ear. So auricle. So you can see here. This is the auricle. It is an uh, elastic cartilage. Okay. It has a uh, several depression or uh, this depression is known as a concave. Okay. So you can see here, this is the depression that we have the concave. Okay. And then uh, we have the lobule here. Lobule is a part of the uh, auricle uh, that, uh, don't, uh, that uh, absence of the cartilage. Okay, the part of the uh, the part of the auricle that, uh, that is uh, devoid of cartilage. Uh, lobule. Okay, and the the remaining part of the auricle is uh, elastic cartilage. Uh, okay, elastic cartilage. Okay, so that's why it's a very elastic. You can. Uh, pull the auricles so it's very elastic structure okay and then uh, for the artery supply the auricle is supplied by the posterior auricular artery and superficial temporal artery okay so you can see here these are the two arteries that supply to the auricle the posterior auricular artery and also the superficial temporal artery okay okay uh, posterior auricular artery superficial temporal artery Okay, for the nerve supply, nerve to the skin, skin of the auricle, it is supplied by the uh, great auricular nerve. So you can see here, this is the great auricular nerve that merge and going up and then supply to the skin of the auricle. And then we have the uh, auricular temporal nerve. So you can see here, this is the auricular temporal nerve. Okay. And the lymphatic drainage, it is uh, uh, okay. So for half of the auricle, uh, it, it will drain into the superficial parotid lymph node. So you can see here, this is the uh, superficial parotid lymph node. And also, eh, sorry, this is the superficial, sorry, not the one. Eh? This is the superficial parotid, superficial parotid lymph node. Okay. So I correct back. Eh? This is the parotid gland. Eh? So this is the superficial parotid lymph node. Okay. 
the the yellow color uh, structure here okay because the uh, the uh, the parent uh, the superficial parotid not it is associated with the uh, parotid gland. This is the parotid gland. And then uh, at the back here, at the back there, okay, we have the mastoid limb. Uh, this is the mastoid limb. And then the inferior half will go into the superficial cervical limb. Not. So you can see here, this is the superficial cervical limb. Not. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, whenever we want to examine the uh, uh, the ear, so we use a microscope. Okay, and this uh, examination is known as microscopic examination. So for the infant, we just pull the auricle down and back to strengthen, uh, to stretch, to stretch, to make the this canal become straight, straight. Uh, pull auricle down and back. But for the adult, we have to the we have to pull auricle up and out and back. Okay, whenever we will, will make like this, so it will reduce the curvature of the external acoustic meters. So it, you know, the external acoustic meter meter becomes straight. So you can view the internal structure, uh, the, the structure. Here, okay. So you can view the the, the membrane. Okay. Okay, and then for external acoustic meters, so this is the ex ex external acoustic meters. It's a canal. Okay. So for the uh, external acoustic meters, uh. Uh, it has a cartilaginous part, so you can see here this is a cartilaginous part, and we have the bony part. Okay, the cartilaginous part it is a lateral cut uh, line by skin, so you can see here the line here, the, uh, the brown color line here, it is uh, actually it represents the skin the line with the skin containing the hair. And uh, skin uh, that line the cartilaginous part it has a sebaceous and also the ceruminous gland, and this gland it produces a cerumen. cerumen. And the body part here, you can see here the, the yellow color arrow here. So it is a medial to third, okay, medial to third line with the skin also. Okay, it is continuous with the skin that line the external layer of the tympanic membrane. So you can see here this is the tympanic membrane. Okay. So this is the external acoustic matters, okay, the cartilaginous part and also the body part. Okay, for the tympanic membrane, okay, this is the tympanic membrane. It is a translucent. Purely gray structure, okay, translucent purely gray structure. We have a shallow, a shallow central depression. In the middle here, we have a shallow central depression, and the peak here is known as the umbo. So you can see here, this is the umbo. And for the tympanic membrane, it has two part: the pars placida, okay, placid, and pars tensa, tense. Okay, the pars placida is thin, placid. And whenever you do the otoscopic examination, so there is a, uh, you can see a. Cone of light. So this is a cone of light that radiate anterior inferior from the umbo from here okay, to here. Okay, anterior inferior from the umbo. Cone of light. And for the tympanic membrane, uh, the nerve supply, uh, external part that's uh, the, uh, facing toward the external environment, the skin, the skin of the skin, the thin skin. Uh, it is a, a skin that covering the, uh, the external part of the tympanic membrane. Okay, it is supplied by the auricular temporal nerve. Auricular temporal nerve actually is the mandibular division of the trigeminal. Okay, and then uh, for the internal part mm -hmm. lined by the nucleus membrane, it, it is supplied by the uh, nine cranial nerves. Okay? okay, so you can see here this is the right tympanic membrane. Okay, we have the pars tensa here, and this is the pars placida, and then we have the umbo here, and this is the cone of light. And actually, this is the handle of medius. So you can see here, this is the real tympanic membrane. Okay, it's a translucent structure, right? Okay. Uh, whenever you remove uh, this kind of, uh, uh, whenever you remove the tympanic membrane, so you can see the internal structure. You can see the uh, the bony ossicle, bone, uh, the small bone, and then also the muscle. We have the muscle. We have the tensor tibial muscle. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we're going to proceed to discuss on the middle ear. Okay. So where is the location of the middle ear? It is located at the petrous part of the temporal bone. Uh, these are the components of the middle ear. We have the tympanic cavity. Okay, the tympanic cavity actually is internal to the tympanic membrane. So you can see here this is the tympanic membrane. So the tympanic cavity is internal to the tympanic, uh, tympanic membrane. Okay, internal to the tympanic membrane. So this is the area of the tympanic cavity. We have above here, we have the epitempanic vessels. The epitempanic vessels actually is space superior to the tympanic membrane. 
is regulated into the epitaphonic nature. And uh, we have the pharyngotaphonic tube. Pharyngotaphonic hmm? tube is uh, lead to the anterior part. And the pharyngotaphonic tube is connect with the nasopharynx. Okay, connect with the nasopharynx. And, okay. Toward the back, so this is the toward the back. Eh? This is the toward the anterior, this is toward the back. Okay, different view from this. Lah, okay, toward the back, we have the mastered antrum. Poster, uh, okay, mastered antrum actually is located in at the posterior superior part. Okay, so the mastered antrum it connect with the mastered cell. So you can see here the small, small here is actually is a mastered cell. Okay, this is the mastered antrum. Okay, toward the posterior superior part. Okay, okay so this is the uh, whenever you see the from the medial view, lah, medial view. Uh, this is the mid lateral wall. Okay, so you can see here this is the tympanic. Uh, uh, tympanic. This is the uh, tympanic membrane. Also, this is the tympanic membrane and the membrane, tympanic membrane. And we have the epitaphonic vessel here. Okay, and then we have the tensor tympani muscle. We have the caudal tympani uh, tympani nerve. Caudal tympani nerve actually is a branches of the uh, facial nerve. Okay, and then we have the pharyngeal tympanic tube, the tissue tube. And then uh, this is the uh, lateral view and medial wall. Okay, medial wall, medial wall, lateral view, medial wall. So uh, you can see the tympanic plexus. Okay, this is tympanic plexus. Okay, so tympanic muscle, pharyngeal tympanic tube, and also toward the posterior superior, we have the muscular atrium. Okay. Okay. Uh, now we're going to proceed to discuss on the content of the medial ear. So the content of medial ear. So we have the auditory ossicles, eh? the bony ossicle, the bone. Okay, we have the medius, incus, and also the stapes. Okay, the three bone. Okay, I mentioned this now. Okay, uh, and then we also have the stapedius muscle. Okay, and then we have the tensor tympanic muscle, and the nerve for the tympanic nerve eh? and tympanic plexus of the nerve. So this is the tympanic plexus of the nerve. Okay, so you can see here. Uh, this is the stapedius muscle, tensor tympanic muscle. Okay. And this is the stapes, stapes, okay. And this stapes actually the uh, the best of the stapes it occupy on the uh occupy, hmm? uh, close the upper window. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we have the fossa for the round window here. Okay. So this is the bone that I mentioned just now. Okay. We have the incus, medius, and the stapes. Okay. The stapes, medius, incus. Okay. This is the handle of medius that attached to the tympanic membrane. Okay. Okay. For the medial ear, the important uh, the important the thing that you have to know is the wall of the tympanic cavity. What are the structure that form the wall of the tympanic cavity? Okay. For the roof, so this is the sketch okay, of the how actually the medial ear that actually like look 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 like okay the medial ear. Okay. So the roof, this is the roof. So this is the real one. Okay. You can see this is the roof. Okay. So it is formed by the tegmen tibinae. So you can see that this is the tegmen tibinae. Tegmen tibinae is actually is a thin bone. Okay. And this thin bone is separate from the dura meter. Above here we have the, uh, the, the covering part of the vent, the dura meter. And then we have the floor. Of, uh, here is actually the floor of the middle cranial fossa. Okay. So this is the roof. So this is the roof. Okay. So this is the tegmen tibinae, the thin part of the bone. Tegmen. And then the floor. Okay. The floor. It is separated from the superior bulb, okay, superior bulb of the internal jugular vein. So it is in the internal jugular vein. And then we have four wall, lateral wall, middle wall, okay, uh, lateral, lateral wall, middle wall, anterior wall, and posterior wall. So you can see here this is posterior wall, this is the anterior wall. Okay, okay this is the uh, medial. Okay. okay, start to discuss one by one the lateral wall. So you can see here, uh, this is the lateral wall. The, wall, okay, lateral. the lateral wall is formed by the tympanic membrane. Okay. The component of that form the lateral, lateral wall is a tympanic membrane. And also above here we have the happy tympanic recess. Okay, happy tympanic recess. And on the medial wall, okay, the middle wall here, okay, middle wall, separate from the inner ear. Okay, separate from the inner ear. This is the inner ear. Okay. Okay, this is the inner ear. Yeah. Okay. And we have the promontory. So you can see here this is the promontory. The promontory is due to the vessel of the cochlea, okay, was a turn of the cochlea. You can see here, this is the promontory, okay, promontory, due to the basal turn of the cochlea, the initial turn of the cochlea. Okay, uh, the anterior wall, so this is toward the anterior, toward the posterior, 
Okay. Anterior wall, so these are the structure that form the anterior uh, wall. Okay. The, carot uh, the carotid canal. So this is the carotid artery. So supposedly we have the carotid canal. Okay. Because uh, the carotid artery is actually passing through the carotid uh, canal. Okay. So this is uh, the first structure that form the anterior. And then opening for auditory tube. Okay. So we have the uh, opening for the auditory tube here. Okay. This is the auditory tube or station tube. Opening the tympanic tube. And then we have the tensor tympanic muscle. So you can see here the tensor tympanic muscle that also form the uh, anterior wall. And then for the posterior wall. So the editors, okay, this is the part component that start to form the uh, posterior wall. The editors to the mastered antrum, the editors to the mastered antrum, okay. And then we have the canal of the for the fascia nerve. So the, you can see here this is the fascia nerve. So we have the canal. So the fascia, canal for the fascia nerve, it form the posterior wall, okay. So you can see the, here the fascia nerve is descending. And then, okay, just to show you what other structure that we have here. So you can see here, this is what the anterior part. Okay, so you can see here, we have the anterior part, anterior wall. We have the opening for the finger tympanic tube, the tensor tympanic muscle, and also the keratic canal. Okay, and then toward the back there, here we have the orifice to the master interim. Okay, and then we have the canal for the patient nerve. Okay, okay. and then medial wall. So you can see here the commentary. Okay, commentary, the breast of the cochlea. Yeah. Okay, what is the pharyngeal tympanic tube? Hmm. Pharyngeal tympanic tube, uh, it connects the tympanic cavity to the nasopharynx. So that is the function of the pharyngeal tympanic tube or extension tube. Hmm. Uh, it opens posterior to the inferior matters of the nasal cavity. So you can see here, it opens here. Hmm. Open posterior to the inferior matters of the nasal cavity. Okay. Uh, postural retracted. Postural retracted is bony part. So you can see here, this is a postural retracted. The posterior third is a body part, and uh, the, the, the posterior third actually is located nearer to the to the tympanic cavity, lah. It's a body part. So the function of the pharyngeal tympanic tube is to equalize the pressure in the middle ear with the atmospheric pressure. So that is the function of the uh, pharyngeal tympanic tube. Okay, uh, for the middle ear. Uh, we have the uh, auditory ossicles, okay? The bone, the, the small bone that I mentioned just now. So we have three bones. We have the medius, incus, and also the stapes. So this is the medius, incus, and stapes. So this is the part of the each of the bone that I mentioned just now. For the medius, medius, we have the head, head neck. We have the handle, okay? For the incus, we have the body in the middle here. We have the long limb and short limb. And for the stapes, we have uh, two limb, okay. We have the best and also the head, okay. Okay, and then the muscle that associated with the bony ossicles is uh, there are two, there are two actually, there are two muscles, the tensor tympanic muscles and also the stapes muscle, okay. So you can see here this is the tensor tympanic muscle, this is stapes muscle. So the tensor tympanic muscle, yeah, uh, it hand, uh, pull the handle of malleus medially, okay. It pull the handle of medius, medius, handle of medius medially. So whenever it pull the handle of medius medially, so it will cause the tense of the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane will become tense. So whenever the the, the membrane become tense, so the vibration the uh, the vibration will be become lessened. So the function of the tense tympanic muscle actually is to prevent the internal ear damage to the loud sound. So the loud sound will be the vibration will be not transmitted to the inner ear. Uh, the tensor tympanic muscle here it is uh, innervated by the uh, the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Okay, for the stapedius muscle, okay, uh, the stapedius muscle so we can see how uh, how it is being attached to the stapes. Okay, so stapedius muscle it pull the stapes posteriorly. Okay, whenever it pull the stapes posteriorly, it will dampen the vibration of the tympanic membrane. Okay, uh, so the uh, function is to prevent the excessive movement of the stapes. <laughs> Okay, so the, whenever it uh, pull the stapes posteriorly, so the stapes will be moving, uh, uh, the movement will become slowly, lah, okay, not excessively. Okay, so uh, the stapedius muscle it is uh, supplied by or inhibited by the nerve to the stapedius. Nerve to the stapedius actually is the branches of the seventh vein. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the internal ear. 
Okay, for the internal ear, the location and the petrous part of the temporal bone, or the this petrous part of the temporal bone is also also known as a bone neurotic capsule. So the internal ear it has two function, it carry two function, the vestibular cochlear organ, right? vestibular cochlear organ for the reception of the sound and also the maintenance of the balance. So these are the two function of the vestibular cochlear organ, the internal ear. Okay, for the internal ear we have the bony labyrinth. The bony labyrinth contain the perilin. Okay, the fluid. Perilin is actually is a fluid. Membranous labyrinth it contain the endolin. So we have the bony labyrinth here, and then we have the membranous labyrinth here. Okay, okay for the bony labyrinth. Okay, uh, bony labyrinth. So you can see here, this is the bony uh, bony part. Bony lah, bony. Bone. Okay, bony labyrinth. It is a fluid filled space. Fluid filled space that composed of three part. Okay, composed of the cochlea, composed of the vestibule, and also the semicircular canal. So these are the three component of the bony labyrinth. Okay, start to discuss on the cochlea first. Cochlea is a shell shape, shell. Okay, like shell like shell shape. So the cochlea contain the cochlea duct. So inside the cochlea here we have the cochlea duct. And the cochlea duct is actually is concerned or important for the hearing purpose. Okay. And the spiral canal, the spiral canal of the cochlea, this is spiral canal of the cochlea, it begins at the vestibule. So you can see here this is the vestibule, it begins at the vestibule. So it makes 2.5 turn. 1, 2.5 turn. Okay, around the modulus. In the middle here we have the modulus. The modulus is a core of spongy bone. Okay, core of spongy bones. So the modulus it contains the canal for the blood vessels and also the cochlear nerve. So I will show you the modulus. Modules. Okay, so you can see here this is the okay in the middle here we have the modulus called spongy bone. Okay, the okay, modulus. So here we have the nerve, the cochlear nerve. Okay, you can see here. So you can see how the turning process actually happen. Two point five turn the cochlea. Okay. Okay. Uh, the cochlea, uh, the promontory is the basal turn of the cochlea. Promontory, uh, the basal turn of the cochlea. Promontory that yeah, you can see. Uh, actually, promontory is actually is from the middle wall, middle wall of the middle wall of the middle ear. Okay. Uh, so you can see uh, I have shown you before lah. Uh, this is the promontory. Okay, basal turn of the cochlea. Basal turn of the cochlea. Initial for turning of the cochlea, and uh, uh, on, okay, it is located on the middle one of the cochlea. Okay, uh, the cochlea it communicate with the subarachnoid space via the cochlea conduct. So you can see here. Uh, so this is the cochlea conduct. Okay, it com communicate with the subarachnoid space via the cochlea conduct. Okay, so you can see here this is the bony lah, bony spiral uh, the that spiral. Okay, you can see spiral. The bony is a uh, brownish in color. Okay, cochlear duct. Uh, uh, cochlear duct is actually is a bluish in color. Okay, and then we have the round window. The round window is crossed by the secondary tympanic membrane. So you can see here this is the round window. Okay, that's uh, closed by the uh, secondary tympanic membrane. So here this is the round window closed by the secondary tympanic membrane. Okay, this is the round window. So you can see how the osseous spiral linear, spiral in the spiral form. In the middle here, we have the modulus. Okay. Okay, and then we now we are going to proceed with the vestibule. Okay, vestibule. It is a small here. This is vestibule. It's a small oval chamber. Okay, it contains a utricle and socule. Okay, the utricle and socule involved in the. It actually is part of the balancing apparatus. Balance for the balance. And on the lateral lateral part, we have the oval window. This is the oval window, okay. and this oval window, this one, right? So it's okay. This is the oval window. Okay, the oval window it is covered by the base of the stethis. Okay, okay. Try to imagine uh, this toward the uh, toward the anterior, toward the posterior. Okay, anteriorly it is continue with the bony cochlea. So you can see here it continue with the bony cochlea. Posterior it continue with the uh, semicircular canal. Okay, and then we have the aqueduct of vestibule. Aqueduct of vestibule continue with the posterior cranial fossa. 
So you can see here, this is aqueduct of vestibule. Okay. Aqueduct of vestibule. Okay. Uh, continue with the posterior canal fossa. Okay. Aqueduct of the, of the vestibule. And then it open into the uh, to the internal acoustic meters. Open into the internal acoustic meters. Okay. And it transmit the indoor lymphatic duct and blood vessel. So you can see here. Side here. Blue color line here actually indoor lymphatic duct. Indoor lymphatic duct. Okay, the duct end of vestibule. And then, uh, yeah. And then, uh, now we're going to proceed to the semi circular canal. Okay, for the semi circular canal, we have three canal. We have the anterior canal, we have the posterior canal, we have the lateral canal. Okay, uh, for this canal, I will discuss further. Okay, so the uh, the semi circular canal it communicate with the vestibule of the bony labyrinth. Communicate with the vestibule of the bony labyrinth. So you can see here the semi circular canal it communicate with the vestibule. Continues with the uh, vestibule. Okay, vestibule of the bony labyrinth. Okay, and the semi circular canal it lie posterior superior to vestibule. It lie posterior superior to the vestibule, moving toward the posterior. Each semi circular canal. So you can see here, each semi-circular canal here uh, actually is consists of two-thirds of a circle, two-thirds of a circle, 1.5 millimeter in diameter. Two-thirds of the circle, 1.5 millimeter in diameter. Okay. And it is at the side, uh, set at the right angle to each other. So you can see here, it's set at the right angle to each other. Whenever you draw a, a line, uh, line from here to here or from here to here, here, here to here. So it is 90 degrees to each other. Okay, 90 degree, degree to each other. Set at the right angle to each other. And then uh, there is a swelling at each end. Okay, if you see here, there is a swelling at each end. This swelling is known as a ampulla. Okay, swelling. And it has five opening. Okay, the, the special about the anterior and posterior canal, it form the one common dim. So you can see here. Okay. It will form a uh, the posterior canal, uh, posterior, uh, the anterior, uh, anterior canal, and posterior canal. It form a one common dim. Okay. Within the canal, we have the semi circular duct. Okay. Inside the canal, we have the semi circular duct. So you can see here the blue color line here actually is a semi circular duct. Okay. okay. That is regarding the semi circular canal. Okay. You can see here this is the semi circular canal, and this is the semi circular duct. Okay. Okay. You can see here we have a uh, uh, this is the anterior. Okay, this is the this is lateral, this is the posterior. Okay, so this one anterior and uh, anterior, and also the post uh, anterior, and also the uh, the posterior. It form the one common limb. This is the common membrane limb. Okay, this is the actually the 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 the, uh, the, the this structure actually is present inside here. Okay, try to imagine this one we put inside here. Okay, this is the body level. Okay, now we're going to proceed to the next slide. Okay, for the next slide, we discuss on the membranous labyrinth. So the membranous labyrinth it contains a series of uh, communicating sex and also the duct. Okay, sex and also the duct. Duct. Bony labyrinth is bone, but here is sex and duct. So the membranous labyrinth it contains the endolim, a watery fluid. Okay. So just now we have uh, okay, just to recap back. Uh, okay, what I have mentioned just now, the we have the vestibular labyrinth, we have the cochlear labyrinth. First for the vestibular labyrinth, we have the crease circular duct and also the uricular and secure. For the cochlear labyrinth, we have the cochlear duct. Okay. The three semicircular duct is present or located inside the semicircular canal. Uricular and secure is located inside the vestibule. And then the cochlear duct is located inside the cochlear. So uh, the membranous labyrinth it forms a series of communication. So you can see how, how it's being connected from the semicircular duct, connected to the utricle, and then connected to the secule by the uh, utricular circular duct. And then we have the endolymphatic duct here, and then the secule is connected to the cochlear duct by the ductus union. Okay. So the same thing that I mentioned, you can see here, uh, this is the semicircular duct. Okay, and then semicircular duct is connected to the utricle. Utricle is connected to the Secured by the duct here, the utricular circular duct. Then we have the interrelated duct here. And then it's connected to the cochlear duct by the ductus reunion. Okay. 
And then we have the inner lymphatic sac here. In the lymphatic sac, it acts as a reservoir for excess of the indoor limb. Okay. And, and then we have the inner lymphatic duct here in aqueduct of vestibule. Okay. Okay. Uh, we discuss on the vestibular labyrinth. Okay, vestibular labyrinth, the utricle and also the secule. Okay, for the utricle and secule, it contains a specialized sensory epithelium. Okay, specialized sensory epithelium. And this sens uh, specialized sensory epithelium is known as a macula. Okay, uh, so the function of the macula is to sense, to, uh, it sends the position of the head uh, and also its linear movement. Okay, so we have the macula of utricle or macula utricle. So the macula of utricle, it is actually is located at the floor of utricle, okay, Horiz horizontally uh, positioned. So it is uh, parallel with the base of the scalp. The macula of secule, uh, it is also known as macula seculi, seculi. It is uh, vertically placed on the middle wall of the secule. Okay. And the hair cell of macula, it is supplied by the vestibular division of the vestibular division of the vestibular cochlea the acrylinus, okay. The primary sensory ganglion is located in the vestibular ganglion in, inside the internal acoustic nucleus. So you can see here, this is the secule, this is the utricle. So this is the vestibular ganglion, okay, vestibular ganglion. The, the vestibular ganglion actually is a primary sensory ganglion, okay. That located in, in the internal acoustic nucleus, internal acoustic nucleus, okay. Okay, you can see here. This is the uh, the okay the macula of you. Uh, this is the macula of your fecal. This is the macula of your septum sexual. Okay, so you know you can see the direction, the positions of the macula, the epithelium. So the, the macula of you, uh, macula of your fecal, it is a horizontal right the floor. This is the vertical. Okay, horizontal vertical. Okay, whenever you see the macula under the, uh, the surface electron microscope, so you can see the macula of utricle. So you can see like this, like this. These are the the uh, the epithelium, the sensory epithelium that we have, like one hair cell. We have like two hair cells. Okay, and then we have the uh, stereocilia. Okay, and then we have the otolith membrane. Okay, and the otoconia. otoconia. Okay, and then uh, for the semicircular duct, okay. if you if you see here, each uh, duct it has the ampulla at one end. Okay, ampulla, the direct the direct portion, and the total number is three, one, two, three. And each ampulla it contain the ampulla crest, ampul ampulla ampullary crest, crystal uh, ampullaris, crystal ampullaris. Actually, it's a sensory epithelium, eh? okay, crystal ampullaris. The crest are sensitive to the angular acceleration of the head, so the uh, it sense eh, the or it's sensitive to the angular acceleration of the head. And the hair cell of space stimulate the primary sensory neuro neuron and the cell body allocated in the vestibular ganglia. Okay, vestibular ganglia. So you can see here this is the crystal ampullaris. So you can see here we have the uh, nerve fiber and then the hair cell. And this is the hair bundle uh, the bundle. Okay. Stereocilia. And above here we have the cupula. Okay. And then for the cochlea labyrinth, just now we have discussed on the vestibular labyrinth. Okay. Cochlea labyrinth is a cochlea duct. Okay. Cochlea duct. For the cochlea duct, okay. Cochlea canal. Okay. Cochlea canal is divided into three scala. Scala. Scala is a plural. We have the scala media, scala vestibular, and scala tympani. For the scala media, okay. Scala media actually is a cochlea duct. Okay. So, uh, scala media is uh, belong to the, to the cochlea duct. So, uh, it's a a real cochlear duct. Scala media. It's a middle part, the actual cochlear duct. And the scala media, it contains the endolim. And the scala media, it continues with the secure. And the scala media also contains the organ of the thigh. Okay, so you can see here. Okay, this is the this is the cochlear duct. This is the scala media. The actual cochlear duct, scala media, in the middle, scala media. So this is the scala vestibuli. This is the scala tympani. Okay. Okay. The scala vestibuli and scala tympani it communicate with each other. So uh, there is a communication uh, between the scala vestibuli and scala tympani. Okay. Communication. Uh, it communicate with each other at the apex of the cochlea via the channel called the hypothalamus. 
at the effects, if you see the turn like, turn like this, right? So at the effects here, there is a communication between these two. Skala media and skala vestibular. Uh, skala, sorry. Bet uh, the communication between the skala continua and skala vestibular. Okay, it continues actually. Okay, at the effects here. And the uh, opening here is known as the helicotomy. Okay. So you can see the direction of the arrow here. How the communication actually is really happen. Okay. And we have the spiral ligament. So you can see here, this is the spiral ligament. It secure the cochlear duct, okay, the cochlear duct here to the cochlear canal. Okay. So this is the cochlear canal. Cochlear canal. The whole structure is cochlear canal. The cochlear canal. Okay, canal is divided into three scala. Right? Okay. Okay. For the cochlear duct, okay, we are focusing on the cochlear duct. So this is the cochlear duct. The roof here, the roof. It is from uh, it is actually uh, covered by the vestibular membrane. It's formed by the vestibular membrane, and the floor is uh, by the basilar membrane. And the basilar membrane here it contains the receptor of auditory stimuli, spiral organ of the time. We have the sensory epithelium here. Okay, the receptor of auditory stimuli that sends the here lah, uh, that sends the 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 voice okay, for the hearing purpose. Okay. And spinal organ is covered by the tectorial membrane. So you can see here, we have the tectorial membrane here. Okay. And the tips of the hair cell of the spinal organ are embedded in the tectorial membrane. So you can see here, this one is more bigger size. The tip of the hair cell uh, is embedded in the tectorial membrane. So here we have the tectorial membrane. So here we have the basilar membrane. Okay. And this is the vestibular membrane. This is the vestibular membrane. And then uh, for the spinal organ of Kotai, it consists of the inner hair cell, outer hair cell, inner and outer pharyngeal cell, and pillar cell. Okay, for the inner hair cell, so this is the inner hair cell. Okay, inner hair cell is closer to the spiral lumina. This is the osseous spiral lumina. Okay, osseous spiral lumina, the bone part, that spiral. Uh, outer hair cell, this is the outer hair cell. You see, inner, house, inner hair cell, this is outer hair cell. Outer hair cell, further from the spiral lumina. Okay. Okay, so as a conclusion, we have uh, three components of the specialized sensory cell in the membranous labyrinth. We have the fista ampullaris that uh, present inside the semicircular duct. We have uh, macula, maculae of the utricle and secure, and then we have the spiral organ of cochlear the cochlear duct. Okay, fista ampullaris, we have three in number, macula, we have two, and spiral organ of cochlear of the cochlear duct. So this is the sensory epithelium, sensory cell uh, in the membranous labyrinth. Okay, thank you. I hope you, you enjoy the presentation. Thank you.